The first reading is from the first book of Chronicles, chapter 12. And these are the numbers of the bands that were ready armed to the war, and came to David to Hebron, to turn the kingdom of Saul to him, according to the word of the Lord. The children of Judah, that bear shield and spear, were six thousand and eight hundred, ready armed to the war. Of the children of Simeon, mighty men of valour for the war, seven thousand and one hundred. Of the children of Levi, four thousand and six hundred. And Jehoiada was the leader of the Aaronites, and with him were three thousand and seven hundred. And Zadok, a young man mighty of valour, and of his father's house twenty and two captains. And of the children of Benjamin, the kindred of Saul, three thousand. For hitherto the greatest part of them had kept the ward of the house of Saul. And of the children of Ephraim, twenty thousand and eight hundred, mighty men of valour, famous throughout the house of their fathers, and of the half-tribe of Manasseh, eighteen thousand, which were expressed by name to come and make David king. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were two hundred, and all their brethren were at their command. All these men of war that would keep rank came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel and all the rest also of Israel were of one heart to make David king. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from the book of Colossians chapter 4. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all prayer also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance, to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees and the Sadducees came, and to test Jesus they asked him to show them a sign from heaven. He answered them, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be stormy today, for the sky is red and threatening. You know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but you cannot interpret the signs of the times. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, um. Hello and welcome to Devon. I am in St. Bridget's Church in Virginstone, a Devon parish, and yet officially not a Devon church, for St. Bridget's belongs to Troy Diocese. This is my home church, the church in which I was baptised, where I worshipped for most of my adult life, and the parish in which we live and farm. So a very warm welcome to you all to Virginster today. We have just heard from Matthew's Gospel, Jesus' words to the Pharisees and Sadducees, rebuking them for not being able to interpret the signs of the times. And this has led me to ask, how do we interpret the signs of the times today? especially today, in this year of 2020, this year of COVID-19, how do we interpret the signs of the times? Because these are no ordinary times. 
This is a time of great loss and pain and hurt and bereavement for so many, of isolation, and yet of testimonies of people who've gone beyond at their own personal cost to protect others and to serve us. It's also a time of quietness, of reflection, a time of being able to hear bird songs, the roads are quieter. It is a mixed time. And it's a time to ask, what is this sign? How do we interpret this sign? And how do we respond? And that's difficult because, of course, the times are uncertain and we don't know what is going to happen. So where is God in this time? And what might today's readings have to say about it? Let's begin with the Old Testament, with the reading from the book of Chronicles, because that was a time in which there were two kings ruling at the same time in Israel. King David was ruling over the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, and Saul's son Ishbael was ruling over the other tribes in Israel, the other ten tribes. And so it was a time of tension and conflict. It was a time in which Saul, who had died as king and rightfully his son had taken the throne after him, was the rightful king and heir for the throne. But David had been chosen by God. He had been anointed by a prophet. And gradually the people of Israel, the tribes of Israel, began to recognise that David was to be their king. And so when Ishbael died, instead of his son being put on the throne, there was a groundswell movement of the tribes as they began to recognise the signs of their times. We have that lovely verse in the middle of the reading we listened to this morning, which said that the tribe of Issachar were those who had understanding of the times and they knew what the nation of Israel ought to do. Tribes that had the understanding of the times and they knew what the nation ought to do. And so they gathered together all the tribes at Hebron and there made King David king over the entire nation, without civil war and bloodshed and unrest, but simply as a large movement in which together the people understood and saw David as their future king. So what about today? What is it that we are intrinsically understanding? What is happening that we're beginning to understand? in this new strange world of lockdown and coronavirus. What has that to teach us today? And how do we interpret it in the light of scripture? Lockdown is, as I said earlier, a time of isolation. And yet when we locked the church doors, we didn't lock God in the church. Something that has been quite incredible is the way that God has met us in the everyday outside of church. I never thought that I would be able to pray as well at home in a spare bedroom as I have been able to do in a church building. And yet God has met me there in my prayers. And I hear this testimony from so many that as we have had to pray and to dig deep into God, so our spirituality and our faith has grown and we have drawn closer to him. And we're beginning to find that God is not just in church and not just on Sundays, but he's broken out of some of the areas where we saw him before and he has broken into the whole of our lives, into the everyday, into every home. And there we are meeting with God in a new way, in a deeper way, in a way that we receive his blessing, is almost like an incarnation of God broken out from the formal places of worship into our everyday homes. When we think of the incarnation at Christmas and Jesus being born as God's son among people, it's a bit like that, as though God is being born among us in a new, in a new and surprising way. And 
it helps me to understand the incarnation in a way I've never embraced it before, that God is with us in this, in the everyday. There is a verse on the stained glass window behind me, which you can't see, but it says, Lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. The last words of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. I am with you even unto the end of the world. What an amazing thing, that God is with us even in this. That God is among us, and that God is walking alongside us. So as we embrace the signs of this time, and as we discover that God is there ahead of us and with us and in this, even in the struggles and even in the suffering, the loneliness, yet he is walking this path with us. So as we turn to our final reading, and we listen to the letter from Colossians, we get a little glimpse of perhaps what God might be asking us, how he may be asking us to respond as we understand this time. For we hear in the, the epistle to the Colossians, we hear the words, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with thanksgiving. Devote yourselves to prayer. That's a powerful way of praying. Be encouraged to devote ourselves and to be alert at the same time so that we think about what we are praying. That we are called to pray. And at the same time we are asked to pray that God will open a door for the word. Is that not what the incarnation is about? About God opening a door for his word, for his son? We are told so that the mystery of Christ may be known, may be declared, and may be revealed. Is that not a lovely thing that even in the struggles and the darkness and the uncertainty, God is breaking into this, bringing with him his mystery, and being born anew among us. And we are finally reminded to conduct ourselves wisely in order to make the most of the time. We are asked to make the most of this time. We are asked to pray, to devote ourselves into prayer. This is a special time, an anointed time of God's presence with us. Let us respond as he has called us to do in prayer, devoting ourselves to him and finding him in the difficulties and in the struggles which this year is bringing. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would meet us as we strive to seek you. Comfort us, walk with us, and be with us in our deepest needs. Give us grace to be your people, to understand this time, and to respond by devoting ourselves in prayer to you that you may open a door, that your Son may be known. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.